That's actually a sage reminder for my two uh, journalists on the road. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Dramatic day out there. Uh, the first week's not even over. Busy, busy, busy. Let's bring in our Sky News reporters. Uh, the two travelling with the media teams, Trudy McIntosh, is with the PM's team in Melbourne, Jonathan Lee, with the opposition leaders team in Sydney. Uh, Trudy, I'll get to that shocking accident this afternoon involving the Prime Minister's security detail in a moment. But Scott Morrison's political day, those timber workers and the imagery in Tasmania, it had shades of John Howard in the 2004 campaign to me. How did the day play out? We started off the day in the seat of Bass. It's held on a knife's edge, just 0.4%. And as you say, there was echoes of John Howard back in 2004, and the Prime Minister made that very point himself during that press conference. He came armed with this announcement of $220 million to help support the Tasmanian forestry industry. He walked around this sawmill on the outskirts of Launceston. Much of the press conference, though, dominated by this question about whether there's been a broken promise on an anti-federal corruption watch dog. This was following on from my question yesterday at the press conference where the PM indicates that, look, this isn't a priority for him. If he's re-elected, he wants Labor to completely support his model or he's not going to put it into the parliament. The argument given by the Prime Minister today on that is he says he doesn't want it to be a kangaroo court. He believes Labor's model would be a circus. The interesting politics at play here with Bridget Archer by his side, she crossed the floor to support a stronger ICAC and supported the crossbench on that one. But with the PM on her side, she didn't really repeat those comments. No, she was... Uh, discretion is the better part of valour today, I think. And that, that uh, shocking accident today, PM security detail, uh, how are all the officers involved? The last we heard from Tasmanian police, Peter, these four police officers were taken with non-life-threatening injuries to the local hospital. But make no mistake, this was a very serious accident that we saw on the side of the Bass Highway. The media bus was leaving from lunch along this road. We actually slowed down and saw this crash for ourselves. The car had fallen over the barricade, was on its side, and we saw some of the people inside these vehicles had been taken out and were lying on their backs on the ground. It was quite distressing to see this for ourselves. It's only later we realised, after the Prime Minister's office confirmed this, that this was his own security detail who'd been caught up in the crash. Two of them are state police. The other two have been part of the Prime Minister's personal security detail. The PM um, released a statement today issuing his support for the families. These are people that are incredibly close, as you'd know, Peter, to the Prime Minister. He sees them all mm. the time, and so we hope they're OK. Yeah, they're almost like family. You see them that often. Uh, and uh, it was good to see that notice from the Prime Minister that everyone is safe and uh, in hospital. Jonathan, Albanese today, Anthony Albanese, forced to play defence yet again, this time on board protection. It looked pretty untidy to me. He had a couple of goes at forming his language. He came back with a couple of grabs at his second uh, doorstop of a sorts. How is it on the road? It was another tough day for Anthony Albanese of his own making and for the coalition you get a sense it's a bit like putting honey on the biscuit. It certainly doesn't get any easier for the opposition leader. For the travelling media pack we left here at 5.30 this morning, we went to Sydney airport, we jumped on the plane, we headed up to Raff Base, Williamtown and effectively the seat of Hunter. A crucial marginal seat now on a margin of just 3%. It should be Labor heartland but we both know or we all know that it is firmly in play. It's been a Labor seat for the better part of 110 years. Uh, we went to the local hospital, Cessnock, uh, the Cessnock Goannas, home of the Johns brothers, and uh, we talked about health. But the problem was Anthony Albanese ended up getting distracted when it came to border protection, indicating when it came to boats and turnbacks that, yes, as you say, he supported turning back the boats, but the offshore processing wouldn't be needed. Then the coalition, all their phones went hot as everyone started to message us. Did you hear that? Could you believe that? We later went to a mine site and Anthony Albanese corrected himself with the journalists. I don't know whether that was a, whether the journalists were told Anthony wanted to speak again or they asked if they could ask a, a follow-up question to get a clarification, but it was certainly clarified Labor's position as they walk back on that policy. There was also tough questions on the local candidate, uh, uh, Dan Ripacoli, uh, a former mm -hmm. uh, Commonwealth Games gold medalist for historical posts he'd made online. Anthony Albanese said that you can't judge everyone by comments they made in their 20s, otherwise you won't ever have any candidates in the future. Uh, and there was also questions about Ipsos polling on, uh, on the Fin Review, which showed voters were swaying away from Mr Albanese because they didn't know much about him, Peter. Thank you, Jonathan and Trudy. We'll uh, check in with you again.
Thank you for your time.